Hello everyone, my name is Josh Barron, Certified Instructor here at Midwest Truck Driving School. So today we're gonna cover a combination vehicles test, uh, on driving dash tests, um, a great resource. They do a, just a phenomenal job, have a lot of great practice tests that we can do. And uh, a lot of people wanna know, okay, how, uh, how can I understand these questions better? How can I break this stuff down? Now, I will tell you, anytime you go into these tests, it's nice to have training. And uh, the school here puts on a great online training when it comes to combination vehicles and all the different particulars when it comes to the CLP, CDL combination vehicles test. So I'll talk about that more in the end. Let's go ahead and get started into this test here. Um, this is a random test, um, but let's go and break down some of these questions here. Feel free to pause the video when you'd like and answer that question and then we can move on. Um, but we're just gonna dive right in here. So as part of your vehicle inspection test, if your vehicle is equipped with air brakes and has a trailer, you will inspect the air connections between the truck or tractor and the trailer. Make sure that the blank are locked in place and free of damage or air leaks. So right here, these, these um, uh, lines here, these lines and hoses that go from the truck to the, tr uh, for the, to the trailer, uh, they're what you call your service line, your emergency and supply line, and your electrical pigtail. Well, on the service and supply line, you have glad hands that have rubber seals on them. And that is to make sure that air is going from your truck to your trailer properly. So like I said, you want to check these, making sure they're locked in place, and make sure they don't have any air leaks on them, and they're not cut or frayed or anything like that. Uh, what is the emergency airline for us? So we just talked about the emergency airline. That's the red line. Uh, the emergency and supply line is what that is called. And uh, that's going to engage your brakes in case of an air pressure loss. Um, so if that line breaks, your trailer brakes are going to kick on. Uh, that's what it's for. But it also supplies the trailer with air. Uh, that line does a lot. But that's, of course, one of them. Engage the trailer brakes in case of an air pressure loss. You should not back a tractor on under a trailer until the whole air system is. Well, this is one of those things that you want to hook up your air and electrical lines uh, before you fully back under that trailer. Um, and uh, when you do that, then you're going to push in and you're going to pressurize the system. And then you're going to pull out the red, red knob. And so it's going to be at normal pressure. That's going to be the best answer that they're looking for there. To uncouple a loaded trailer after the landing gear has made firm contact with the ground, you should, ooh, let's see. Okay, so it made fir firm contact with the ground. Should we turn the crank here a few more times? So the trailer's lifted off the fifth wheel? Well, if it's a loaded trailer, um, you're probably not going to be able to lift it off uh, off the fifth wheel. I mean, this is really, these, these are really heavy trailers. But you could certainly lift some weight off the tractor, and I think that's what they're getting at with this question. Yep, that's... That would be correct. The air and electrical lines from the tractor the trailer should be. Um, so a lot of times they kind of look like curly fries. They um, are kind of all wound up. And so that way you can make your turn and they can stretch out and contract uh, without ever resting on the catwalk. So they've got to be secured, but they got to have slack in them so that you can make your turns appropriately. That makes sense. After you connect the airlines, but before back onto the trailer, you should, let's see here. So you've connected the airlines. You haven't uh, backed onto the trailer yet. All right, so now you want to supply air to the trailer system and then pull out the air supply knob. Once again, if the trailer has no spring brakes, this is how we stabilize that trailer. Push in the red valve, pull it out, and now it's going to engage the service brakes via air. So that's going to be the best answer they're looking for there. Uh, if your vehicle is equipped with dummy couplers, why should you connect the glad hands to them? Um, so dummy couplers um, just are there on the back of the tractor. And if you're bobtailing, means it's just the semi truck, not the trailer, you connect it to dummy couplers and that way it'll keep dirt and water out of those lines. Uh, that is the, uh, you don't want dirt and water to get in those lines because it can cause issues otherwise. After you have coupled the trailer, you should start to raise the landing gear by using um, so once you've coupled a, a trailer and you go to use the landing gear, um, you want to use that low gear, that torque gear. And then once you get that pressure off the ground, and then you can put it in high gear. So you want to start by using low gear, and then you can put it into high gear. 
The best way to tell if your trailer has started to skid is to see it in your mirrors. Um, once again, if you ever uh, you ever have this would be kind of like a tractor jackknife as the tractor is swinging around. If the trailer swings around, that would be a trailer jackknife. But the big thing here is anytime you have a hard braking type situation, ice or snow, you better check your mirrors, make sure your truck and trailer's not trying to pass your truck up here. While you check if the trailer is securely coupled to the tractor, the landing gear should be, let's see here, slightly raised is what they're looking for here. Now, the reason for that, if you've just coupled the uh, trailer to the tractor, um, it's going to raise that landing gear a little bit. It's going to slightly raise it. Um, that's kind of normal. That should be expected. That ensures that there's no gap between the fifth wheel and the apron. It should be sitting right on top of each other. Uh, um, uh, flush, essentially, is the word I'm looking for. How should you test the tractor semi-trailer connection for security? Okay, so the best way to do this is the tug test. And that's assuming you've just backed under a trailer and now you want to tug against that. Um, so we're going to gently pull forward in low gear against the locked trailer brakes and we're going to look at it. So that makes sense. That's that we're going to tug against it and make sure that it's locked properly. More than half of all truck tire deaths are the result of. So you know what? Speed is always a big issue. Following too closely is an issue, but rollovers are the are, are the really the big one that uh, have the majority of truck driver deaths, rollovers. Um, and that's because these vehicles are high profile vehicles. They have a high center of gravity to say the least. While you're driving a combination vehicle, the emergency line airline brakes or gets pulled apart, which the following will happen. So if the emergency line gets pulled apart, that's the red line, the supply line. So in the combination vehicle online course, um, the school goes into all these specifics. Okay, the emergency and supply line, the service line, what all these different scenarios and situations. Um, so I will tell you if the emergency airline breaks, that red line, the trailer emergency brakes are going to kick on because that line's pressurized. Without that line being pressurized, those emergency brakes are going to kick on. Here are two things that a driver can do to prevent a rollover. Keep the cargo as close to the ground as possible and... Here we go. Let's see. Go slowly around turns. Keep the fifth wheel free play as tight as possible. Make sure the brakes are properly adjusted. So um, going slowly around turns is really, really important. Um, that is why rollovers happen because people are going too fast around corners. So really, really important. Um, go slowly around turns. If your test of the tractor protection valve is successful. So if you're testing the tractor protection valve, that means you're fanning your brakes down and you're looking to get the valve to pop out and engage your emergency brakes. So once again, here, the tractor protection valve control, the trailer air supply control, it'll pop out or go from the normal to the emergency positions. So that's the whole purpose of the tractor protection valve. It's a valve that protects the tractor in the event of an air pressure loss, and it's going to engage your emergency brakes. Makes sense. You supply air to the trailer tanks by, well, simply, if you want to supply air to the trailer tanks, you're going to push in the trailer air supply control. Um, pushing it in opens that valve and supplies air to the trailer. The air leakage rate for a combination vehicle with the engine off and the service brakes released should not exceed. So they're looking at a combination vehicle here and then they're checking the static air leakage rate. So a static air leakage rate for a combination vehicle is not going to be any more than 3 PSI in one minute. Compared with a straight truck or bus, there are blank things to inspect on combination vehicles. So you have the whole coupling system and the fifth wheel, all that good stuff. So there's a lot more things to inspect on combination vehicles. Uh, you wish to turn right from a two-lane, two-way street onto another. Your truck is too long to turn wide without swinging. Uh, swinging wide, you should turn as shown in path. Okay, so these are what they call a a jug handle turn. Now, ideally, we don't want to do jug handle turns if we absolutely can help it. The reason for that is because you're coming into oncoming traffic. Someone could be passing beside you. It's just not an ideal turn we want to do. We always want to turn wide as we complete our turn, like in this scenario here. So this would be B right here is the answer that we're looking for. And you can see just like that, uh, we made it through, uh, passed with 100% here. Um, so once again, I the school puts on a great combination of vehicles training. I'm going to go ahead and put 
that link in the description below. And if you're having trouble with this material, it's nice to get training on this material. School puts on a great training on combination vehicles, and it'll help you pass this test with flying colors. Uh, if you got any questions on that, feel free to give us a call, 906-789-6311. And once again, feel free to hit that like, uh, thumbs up button, and subscribe button. Uh, the school's always got great content they're putting out. Thanks again for watching, and have yourself a great day. We'll talk at you later. Bye-bye.